Hey, everybody. If you want to have exponential growth in your business and you want to achieve massive levels of success, then you'll want to tune in all the way through till the end of this podcast. And I'll show you how to do it through day to day prospecting without coming off as cheesy, salesy, or gimmicky. So we'll get started. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now, stay tuned for our podcast. Hey, everybody. So welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia, episode number 34. I never thought I would get through this many uh, starting off. So I'm really excited to share a lot with you guys today because one of the number one things that I've been asked, I literally just went and spoke to a group of individuals yesterday, an amazing real estate team. And one of the challenges that they were sharing with me was that uh, really knowing what to say when you get these people on the phone. And even if you're dealing with a lot of referrals, how to handle these calls, uh, what to say, what not to say, and how to approach these. So what I want to share with you guys today is sort of a schematic, a roadmap, and a step-by-step blueprint so that when you are, when you're prospecting, when you're making calls, you know what to say, you know how to say it, and when to say it. And I will be, because I am, uh, because I'm running solo today, I will be checking over comments. So if any of you have specifics, maybe you're getting a a certain objection that you're having trouble overcoming, uh, maybe there's just something that's a bottleneck or a rock in your shoe, I will be happy to to help you out here. So uh, first things first, where I want to start with this is I want to talk about call reluctance. And call reluctance kills more business than any recession ever will. And a lot of times what ends up happening is most of us get into this, they get, we get in our own way. And whether you're a business owner, whether you are a salesperson, it doesn't matter. We all get call reluctance. So having that reluctance to jump on the line, what we generally end up finding is that it's it's getting ready to get ready. We're over preparing, but we're not actually getting on the phone and we're not doing what we need to do to get those results that we so want. And in back in, I mean, I started doing this back in 2004. So I've been in mortgage. I've seen where we were literally selling people on, they had 11, 12% interest rates and bringing them down to nine and 10% rates. So I have been through uh, the subprime meltdown, did well during that. Uh, and also up until today. And I would have to say that this is probably one of the weakest times as far as recessions goes, because I believe with 100% certainty that uh, this is gonna be something that's very temporary and we will get through it. But the number one thing right now that you can control, you certainly can't control what's going on in the outside world. You can control what's going on with your prospects and in their lives right now. So talking about the first thing, which is call reluctance, again, This is something, the easiest way to overcome this and how I was able to get to the point where I was consistently setting 50 to 60 appointments per month, I was going for no, which is a very interesting concept. And most people hear it and they think, what do you mean go for no? Uh, Hey, Nelson. So when, when people say go for no, it means, let's say that you're making phone calls. A lot of times what we do is we set our level of success on yes. Someone told me yes, and now I have an appointment. Someone said yes, and now I am things are great. I'm going to run this appointment and I'm going to sign them up. Well, what generally ends up happening is a lot of times when those people are saying yes to you, they're also saying yes to anyone else that's calling. So those easy lay downs, the people that are like, yes, I'll do business with you, whatever the case may be. In a lot of cases, if you have more people competing for that business, it's an easy benchmark for us to set our 
our sights on and make it as it's successful. But the challenge that we find is that if we don't, if we look at yes and say, yes, this is where I want to be. They said yes to me. I'm good to go. We're going to find ourselves in a situation where we're not counting the right, we're not counting the right metric. The metrics we need to count is how many times someone tells us no. And that's when the real true sales starts. Uh, when I first got started in the business, I used to cringe. When someone would say no to me, I'm thinking, wow, that's rejection. I'm not good at what I do. I'm bad on the telephone. I should find a new field of work. Now, again, these patterns run in your mind consistently in the background. Whether or not you want to openly admit to that, we all have those patterns that run. But the way to eliminate that pattern is to literally take, okay, what is the success measure? The success is, well, if someone tells me no, I can chalk that up as a something that I set my goals on for that day. And then the true sale starts because now I can start really uncovering what their objective is. What is it that they're so concerned about? What are they worried about? Why are they not looking to do business with me? A lot of the times we are so worried about being either politically correct or not offending or not imposing our will on someone that we're afraid to ask the right questions. So when someone says no, I would just literally take it back and I would unpack that and I'll show you how to do it. But what I want you all to, for all of our viewers that are watching, I want you to write down the go for no. Now, every single day, I would set a personal goal of 15 no's. When I was setting that goal of 15 people telling me no every single day, it would take me hours to get through these calls. And the better I got, the tougher it was to get those no's. So instead, in the process, let's just say that I'm getting, uh, let's say I talk to 40 people in a day. If I talk to 40 people and only 15 people tell me no, I mean, realistically, that means I set 25 appointments for that day. That's where the math goes in there. So that means that all these other people told me yes at one point or another. Counting your no's, though, is the most important thing for you to do because that in itself is going to allow you to get the numbers where you want to get to. Uh, with being in sales, we have a, an act of complacency where we say, okay, I set my appointment for the day. I sold my product for the day. Whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it was that you sold for that day, if that is your final destination, you made a sale for that day, you're good for the day, you're not going to hit the results that you're looking for. And especially now, everything that you were doing up until this time, you have to exponentially grow it. The best thing about this is there's, real, there's really no secret sauce, magic bullets when it comes to this. It's about consistency. A lot of times people say you have to change, you have to become something different, you have to do more. Well, you have to do more when it comes to the consistent actions that work, the universal principles that you're applying every single day to your business. If you're only making 20 calls a day right now, and out of those 20 calls, you're setting one appointment, if you want to grow and go above and beyond that, you need to get 40 calls. You need to get 50 calls. Find out your numbers. Find out exactly what it takes for you to hit the goals and the metrics that you want to hit. So first things first here, 15 no's a day. Embrace no. And don't have that negativity when no comes up because you're going to continuously hear that. And that's going to be your benchmark of what you're going to set to show if you're at a successful level or not. The next thing I tell everyone is get a coach. Get a coach. Now, you can go to my website, www.mattmillie.com. Uh, my team would be happy to coach you on prospecting. Last year, we made over 1.4 million phone calls. Uh, I actually was doing the math on that. It's an astronomical number, uh, 1.4 million sales calls. So to say that our guys know how to do that is, it's an understatement. As far as also getting a role play partner, that is, that is also in line with getting a coach. A coach is going to hold you accountable they're going to be able to help make sure that you dot the I's, cross the T's. But if you are not taking the time to role play with somebody and really internalize scripting and make it your own, it's going to be very difficult for you to succeed at whatever it is you're selling, whether you're, whether you're in the medical field, whether you're in real estate, insurance, it doesn't matter. All of these, all of these common principles you can apply into what you're doing right now. The, uh, the, next, the next barrier here that I know a lot of people are facing, and I've heard a lot of people say, oh, well, with the, 
with the the riots and all the things that are going on and the protesting and with the virus and with the economy not doing as well and unemployment high, we can always look for external forces and use that as our own way of approaching business. The number one mistake though with that is that when you are having a conversation with someone, it's so important to address that elephant in the room. If someone says to you, you know, I'm afraid to sell my house right now because of the virus or whatever the case may be, I use a I use a, a skill which is called the match, mirror, and label. And for everyone who has ever read the book Never Split the Difference uh, by by Chris Voss, this is a a really core staple of what he uses. So for example, if someone were to say, you know, I'm, I'm really fearful of the virus right now, and I'd say, fearful of the virus? And then they're going to, of course, elaborate and open up. They're going to tell me a little bit more about where their fear lies. They're going to tell me a little bit more about where their, what their frame of mind is, what their reference is, really what it is that's holding them back from making a decision. But you don't know what holds them back from making a decision until you know that motivation. So the most important thing, find that motivation by asking match and mirror. You match and you mirror, and then you add a label to it. This is where a lot of times, because some of you guys have heard matching and mirroring, that's not a new concept. But the label is, and where I'm going to share with you with the label, if someone were to say, I'll use real estate as a great example. Someone says, hey, you know what? I, I want to wait. I would say, want to wait? And of course, they're going to have a need to justify their logic. As human beings, we have this emotional desire, a want, and it's almost a social protocol where we feel that if we, if we put something out there, we need to justify what our logic is. So whatever that logic may be, they're going to justify it. Now, the first person that talks loses. So don't be the first person that talks. After someone tells you whatever it is, let's say they want to wait, they want to talk to their significant other, they want to think about it. The goal is elaboration without us sounding salesy, cheesy, or gimmicky. And a lot of people are using the same old tired sales lines. They're using these old school strategies and they're not getting that warm embrace that they're, they're hoping for. So in a lot of cases, if we're going to take a step back and say, okay, I'm going to match whatever it was they told me, I'm going to mirror, I'm going to mirror that. And then, so they might say, I want to wait. I'm going to say, you want to wait? They might say, well, you know, with all the things going on currently, looks like we're in a recession. I really don't think selling the house right now is a good time. Selling the house right now is not a good time? Again, you see, I'm taking the last three or four words and I'm repeating it back to them. Then they're going to tell me, well, I read something online that homes weren't selling as quickly. Homes aren't selling as quickly? After that, I label, I mirror two to three times. They're going to get to a point where, and they're not even going to realize you're doing this. I have used this on, I've used this on big corporate, big owners of companies. I've used this for regular, just selling to consumers or the general public. It doesn't matter. It works. And if you present it and you propose it the right way and use the right tonality, when you say it, it will come across as very genuine and it will come across as if you truly care. And ultimately, if you are making these calls, you should truly care. If you're in business to serve or help anyone at any capacity, there should be some real desire and real care there. And these people don't have the, they're not asked on a daily basis how they're doing or what their goals are, what they want to accomplish. Because in most cases, someone's there trying to use some salesy, old, cheesy, tactics where they're trying to push and pressure someone into doing something that might not be in their best interest. So always lead with ethics when you're doing this and take this matching, this mirroring, go in, unpack the situation a little bit, and then I'm going to put a label on there. Sounds like you're frustrated. Now, all of a sudden, this actually signals in your brain this label will actually help de-escalate the person if they are frustrated, if they're mad, if they're angry, if they're upset about the other situation. And you labeling that situation all of a sudden tells them 
that they are 100% right in the way that they feel. It justifies their feelings. It justifies their emotions and their logic, which means they're going to all of a sudden accomplish one of the most important things, which is the know you, the like you, and the trust you factor. And it's going to be done all 100% subliminally without them even knowing it happened. So now you've taken that resistance that you're going to face when you ask for the business and you have immediately cut it down significantly. And yes, Stephanie, always, always lead with empathy. It's so important. And empathy and sympathy, I've been asked that question, what's the difference between the two? Having sympathy is more or less feeling bad for someone's situation. Uh, maybe you can you can envision what it would be like, but you're not necessarily inserting and putting yourself into that person's situation. Imagine if someone says, you know, I had a significant other, a family member get very ill and pass away. If you, and I know that's a really sad thing, but if you were to put yourself in that situation, you'd feel their emotion. And in turn, you're going to be in 100% rapport with that person because now they know that you felt the same thing. Now, again, when we're doing this, guys, this is extremely, extremely powerful. And I fair warning, you will see your numbers skyrocket if you do this the right way. It does take time to learn, though. I would highly recommend look into the book, Never Split the Difference. Also look into Chris Boss, uh, his training. You will get a ton of content from that alone. With all that being said, practice this. Find a role play partner. Find a coach that will hold you. The coach shouldn't necessarily sit there and tell you what to say. And they shouldn't tell you how to say it. They should really help facilitate your process in, in growth trajectory and where you see yourself. Help you by accomplishing your goals. Help you by knowing what to track, knowing what metrics are important, which brings us into the next part, which is extremely important. We have something called the pre-call stock. And the pre-call stock, it's not as creepy as it may sound, uh, but when you call somebody, before you call them, you do some research on them. The great thing about it is that you have social media at your fingertips. So you can literally go on to someone's Instagram, someone's Facebook, some even someone's LinkedIn, and you'll be able to see everything that that person generally has some interest in. You'll be able to see what they're interested in. You'll be able to see what they're following. You'll be able to see what they, what they deem as valuable and, and, of course, as important. If you can see all of that before you make the phone call, it's a whole lot easier to build that rapport. So that's something that I wanted to share with you guys here. I have to get some water, being the only person talking a lot here. Okay, sorry. So next, we went through a few different went through a few different approaches as far as your calls go. When I say that no like and trust factor, if people want to do business with they feel with people that they feel like are just like them. And during these times especially more than ever, if you're calling someone and it's a cold call, maybe it's someone they haven't talked to for months, I would literally just Make some notes from your prior call. And if you haven't done this, from every call going forward, make sure that you notate everything. It's better to, it's better to write a short story and document everything that took place on that call. Find out their wants, their needs. Find out what motivates them. So that when you have the next phone call with them, you can bring all of that up. Hey, last time we spoke, you told me that you were having some challenges with X. How are things going as it relates to that? Hey, I know this, the virus. I know all the things that have been going on. It's really scary out there. How are you and your family doing? By the way, if you're, when you're changing your approach on these, don't go in looking for a sale. Go in there looking to just add some value. Find out about their situation because I can almost, we've ran the numbers on this. It's over 90% of the time, even if we don't bring up sales or we don't bring up anything about what we do, when we call them back and we say, hey, I know it's been a really trying time right now. How are things going for you and your family? How are things going for you and your wife? When you approach it that way, they're going to open up. They're going to tell you everything. Then they're going to ask you, how are things going in the real estate business? How are things going in the mortgage business and in insurance? This works in every industry. Now, you've been given 
once they ask how things are going, you've been given a green light to talk about how you can help and assist them. Tell them how things are going and then just gently go into the conversation. Listen, I know the last time we spoke, here's where you were. These were your goals. This is what you were looking to accomplish. How has that changed since this is all going on? Is that still the case? Are these still the goals that you're looking to accomplish? And now all of a sudden you could see why it's so important. Have notes document everything that has gone on between you and that person. Have it all there so that you can open up this conversation in a way that doesn't come across as cheesy, salesy, gimmicky. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot, what happens if they don't ask about your business? Well, then you know what? You don't bring it up. It's not a problem. You call them back at another time, maybe call them back in a couple of weeks. Hey, is it all right if I just stay in touch with you every so often just to see how things are going? This shows that you truly 100% you care about them. You want to help them accomplish their goals and you want to help them. And whatever those goals are, you are there to help them facilitate the growth that they need, whether it's growth in, in their life, in their relationships. You are there to help them and you do it through a way of actually being inquisitive. Ask questions from the notes that you took from that previous call or the previous interaction. Uh, a couple of other things here that I've talked with a lot of people on. A lot of people will ask me, well, what what leads are performing the best right now? What are the sources that I should be going to? One of the things that I've really shared with everyone is that at this point in time, it's not necessarily the leads that are a real difference maker. It's how you approach each and every piece of information that you have. If you have someone's phone number and you've had a conversation with them, of course, it's much easier to open up those calls. Now, if these are cold calls, it's totally fine. If it's a cold call, you just go in and say, hey, you know, uh, I know a lot of things are going on right now. It's a real scary place. How are things going for, for you? And you'd be amazed as to how many times people open up. Now, whether it's cold leads, warm leads, somebody engaged with you on your website, your social media platform. It doesn't matter. You should have the same approach with every single one of those leads. You shouldn't just change it up because it's a referral. What I find is a lot of people will make changes because it's a referral or it's someone who uh, they have a personal relationship with. Sure, you're going to talk to them a little bit differently, but your approach should still be the same. This way, you're consistent throughout all your interactions, which again, the most important part of this is maintaining that level of consistency. A few other elements. Don't rely solely on automation to do your prospecting. And I know some people are not going to like that. Uh, there are a lot of schools of thoughts on this. I've done pretty much every type of automation you can imagine between texting, between sending out uh, slide aisles, which is like a ringless voicemail drop. We've done it all. That should be in addition to your calling. And that what you're going to find is that when you do that, you're going to have a much stronger bond with this person. So for example, if someone says they want to do business with you in six months, I like to, I like to take that six month period of time and I want, to, I want to literally cut that down to three interactions at a minimum. So I basically take it and I want to reach out to them at a minimum once every two months. And the once every two months, you should be picking up the phone. And then during the other time, you should have ringless voicemail drops that happen once every month. You should have text, message that, text messages that go out once every month. So now my interaction with them, I'm literally interacting with them two, three times every single month. So I'm staying top of mind, and in, in staying top of mind, I'm giving myself the best opportunity to, to win. So for everyone that's on right now, I do want to open it up to questions. If you see value in this, give it a like, give it a heart. Uh, if there is something that you feel like you might be struggling with, or maybe there's a question or an objection or something that you're hearing more of now than before, I'd love to be able to help really point you in the right direction. Whether I can answer it or not, I'd be happy to find the answer for you. So certainly, guys, post any questions that you have. Uh, and of course, as far as your calling goes, 
the one thing that I would recommend is be consistent, do it early, do it often. Don't be afraid to get on the phone. And what I like to do where we found that we've had a really high connectivity rate in the first day, I will generally, I'll call someone, I will text them, I'll call them again, and then I'll text them again. So they're getting at least four to five touches on the first day. Email's great. I know I haven't talked about email, but email has a much lower open rate. If you can find someone on social media, the one thing that I have found is that Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, even messaging on there makes a world of difference. I found that when I was reaching out to people on social media, the likelihood of them reaching back out, it goes through the roof. And find out exactly where these people want to communicate on. You want to communicate with them on the channel that they are the most, they're the most open to hearing from you. Because ultimately, these folks are not going to, they're not going to communicate with you on the phone if they're not comfortable talking to you on the phone or they're just not there yet. Or they might not want to communicate with you in person if they're not there yet. Chris asks, what's going on, Chris? What are your thoughts on using or creating lead magnets that actually give high value to build a list and then using that list to follow up? I love that. So what Chris is saying for everyone, if if you don't know what a lead magnet is, your lead magnet is your hook. It's the lead in, it's what gets somebody interested. So for example, if you're a, if you're a loan officer, and I know you probably don't think you could do this now, but if you're a loan officer, you could say, hey, rates are under 2%. Let me show you exactly what that means for you. Click on the link below to, instantly claim that offer, uh, you could literally use that lead magnet. That's a lead magnet that is going to give away some massive value or, hey, we're offering a free month of our service. Click on the link. It's only for the first 10 people that submit their information. And or you do a magnet that's just giving something of value away, whatever it is. Let's say it's a script, for example. With us, we have an inside sales company. So I will take a script that I found to be working at a very highly effective level. I'll say, hey, here's the script that we have literally set hundreds of appointments with. I, I'm going to share this with you completely free. All you need to do is go ahead, click the link and put your information in. Now, once you once they put in their information, you now have the data that you need. You have the phone number, you have the email. After that, I would block out where, let's say you give it 24 to 48 hours, you wait, let them digest some of that information and then call them. Set up times where you're calling them, you're texting them, or of course, if they initially replied via the email, use email or use social media. Uh, awesome, great, great question, Chris. Any other questions for anyone that's on here, certainly feel free to uh, to drop them in. But as far as your your approach goes now, guys, don't don't change what's worked for you in the past. Just change how you open up the conversation because people right now are at a very high level of anxiety and stress more than ever before. And that anxiety and that stress can be relieved from you coming into the call with the right tonality, the right physiology, the right, because in most cases, most people don't realize this, it's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. And when you get somebody on the phone, as long as you're asking good questions, how are you handling things right now? How is everything for you and your loved ones? Whatever the case may be, lead with great questions that are going to allow them to open up and tell you more about what's going on. What this does is it evokes what's called the law of reciprocity, which means they want to reciprocate. So if you ask someone, how are things going in your life right now? They might give you their professional, oh, it's great. You know, family's good. Kids are good. Yeah, great. How about you? Again, that opening gave you the it gave you that segue that you needed to ask them about if they're still interested in buying your product, if they're still interested in demoing your service or still interested in whatever it is that you're selling. It gives you that segue. A lot of us though, are afraid to find that segue. And yes, Stephanie, very, it's not 
It's not what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. A lot of the communication that we have over the phone, I had these numbers totally memorized and write them down, but generally it's about, I wanna say it's 55% your physiology, so your posture, the way you're delivering your message, and the, the 30, it's like 38%, the other part is your tonality, the other 7% is the actual words that you're using. So using a very calm, relaxed demeanor when you call someone back, hey, it's Matt, just want to see how things are going for you right now. I know it's been a while since we talked. How are you doing? How are things going for you? Getting into that level of rapport with them and just really getting into their world is going to allow you to accomplish whatever you've set out to do. And again, it's going to evoke that law of reciprocation because now they're going to say, well, he asked me how I was doing, I, I need to do the same. Again, it's just giving you guys segues and it's giving you the opportunity to open up the conversation. So for all of you guys, whether you want help with coaching, whether you want help with inside sales, I'm certainly happy to help facilitate that in any way. Uh, you can go to my website. It's www.mattmilia.com. Uh, our company's appointments today. You can also go to that website as well. Uh, but the mattmilia.com will get you directly to me. So again, guys, a few things just want to recap. Number one, call reluctance will kill more deals than any external forces. It'll kill more deals than any downward cycle of the recession or whatever's going on out there. Call reluctance is you getting in your own way. And look, it's totally normal. It's natural to get nervous before you make a phone call. I mean, hell, I get nervous before doing these at times, especially when I'm by myself, because I know that I need to make certain that I get across all the value that you guys are looking for. And that's my goal every week. So, hey, getting a little nervous is normal. If you're not nervous before making calls, probably either you're, you're just doing it all the time or whatever the case may be. It's natural, though, to get a little nervous. That going for no, though, and actually internalizing and saying, hey, you know what, if I, I'm going to celebrate when they say no to whatever it is I'm proposing, that's when I know I can have a really open and real conversation with them. Because when we hear the word no, we shut down. And when we shut down, we all of a sudden can't think on our feet anymore. We no longer can have a, a highly educated, quick-witted, let me overcome an objection type of conversation. So going for no is going to help a lot. Now, once you go for no, it always, it always makes it easier to... It, go, it makes it easier when we've gone for no and we've internalized that there's nothing wrong with that. It makes it easier to continuously have a, a conversation with them and then segue, go back to what their goals were. When you're opening up calls to one of the most important things is find out their motivation as early as you possibly can. The greatest way to find someone's motivation, what made you decide to reach out today? What was it that brought you to our website? What was it that made you decide to look into this? made you decide that now is a good time? How long have you been thinking about this? Are you the only one that's making a decision on this? Or do you have other individuals that are involved in the decision making process? Oh, your significant other is your significant other on the same page as you are when it comes to this whole process? Does your significant other also want more information on this process and moving forward. If you guys can see all I've been all I'm doing right now is I'm isolating and I'm identifying what objections I'm going to get at the end because I'm going to let you guys in a little secret. I can't stand having to battle a bunch of objections at the end of the call. It sucks. No one likes it. I don't like getting into that awkward back and forth where we're arguing over something. I want to isolate and identify them up front. How do I do that? I ask great questions up front. Hey, how long have you been thinking about this? What brought you to the site? Why is this something, what, what's important to you about this? Why is this important to you? D in doing that, you're gonna find out what's moving them towards your product, your service, whatever it is. That in itself is going to give you the massive leverage that you need to have success over anybody else that they're either looking at or shopping around with. The few things I didn't bring up I was just looking at my notes. When you're making these calls, limit your distractions. I cannot tell you. Distractions also 
kills your ability to make these calls. It's call reluctance. One thing that I found that a lot of people forget is that if you are prospecting, and let's just say you're making calls, and whether it's making calls, whether it's sending emails, whether it's creating trip content, whatever it is, every single day there needs to be a clear roadmap, a checklist of what it is that you want to accomplish and put checks in the box. Once you do that, though, you have to let your clients know, your prospects know, you have to let everyone know, your family, your friends, in between the hours of 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., Monday through Saturday, this is what I focus on. I will not be returning calls during that time. I will not respond to emails or text messages. Please leave me a message here, but I will get back to you as soon as I'm able. I'll get back to you after 11, whatever the case may be. You have to set those boundaries of how you want someone to communicate with you, whether it's a prospect, whether it's a client, it doesn't matter. They need to have those set determined boundaries so that, because it's up to you to set those. If you don't set those, it's, it's going to be very challenging. So that in itself will help you guys out a lot. Eliminate distractions. I always say if you have a room, if you're working from home, which a lot of people are nowadays, find yourself an isolated room, find yourself an area that literally there's nothing in there. I mean, you have your computer, but you're using your office phone, which I would highly recommend to plug in like a Ring Central or Google Voice, something that is going to be on the computer and it's not necessarily going to be the cell phone. Uh, my cell phone is by far my biggest distraction, which I'm sure it is for most people as well. So make sure that you have something that you're not distracted on. Uh, other than that, guys, I hope you get a lot of value out of this. I know that now is the time that most people are pulling back on their business. The worst thing that you can do is pull back. It's best right now to double down because more people right now are going to leave the business, whether it's a financial services, whatever it is, you're going to see less competition in most cases because a lot of people don't have that capital. They don't have the resources, the funding. They don't have even the confidence to start a business right now. So you have a huge advantage. If, even if you're struggling in your business right now, I would recommend whatever you can do with marketing, whatever you can do with getting your name out there to more people, I'd highly recommend to double down on that. So if you want more help, whether it's prospecting, converting your leads at a higher level, coaching, or you want someone to do it for you, you can go to our site. Be glad to help you out. It's www.mattmillia.com. And uh, I'm very excited for next week. We're going to have an amazing guest on. And uh, I hope that you got a ton of value out of this week. And again, questions, feel free to reach out to me on that website. Or you can reach out to me even through, uh, through Messenger or find me on Facebook. I'm in a lot of different places. So look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a great week great week. Make it your best week ever. And I will see you same time, same place. See ya.